What's up, everyone, and welcome to the 11th episode of the Control Freak Podcast, the only Magic the Gathering podcast devoted to all things control in the modern format. The 11th episode, I'm so excited to have back on Francesco Amati. Francesco, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back, man. Yeah, definitely. This is uh, the second time that he's been on. If you are unaware, Francesco is the community manager for the largest modern blue-eyed control in the world on Facebook. He is a writer for CardKnockLife.com. He is a modern control coach for Spice Academy, and he's a content creator of several guides and primers in modern and additionally he's on team solitary pro so today we are going to be talking all things blue white we did a question and answer segment on twitter and in the facebook group that we're both in and he's the moderator of so we we are going to have him field a bunch of questions from all the listeners and if you enjoy this content make sure to follow and subscribe it's on podbean stitcher uh, Apple Podcasts, it's everywhere, basically. <laughs> um, follow me on, on Twitter and follow uh, Francesco at Spikes Neo on Twitter as well. I'm Les Alex on there, and it'll be also on YouTube. So there's a lot of spots. All that stuff will be, though, in, in the description whatever works, below. Be- yeah, whatever, wherever you want to listen or watch, you can definitely do that. So, But let's not hesitate. We've got a bunch of questions to field. Um, and starting us off, I definitely want to uh, get your take on how blue white is positioned in the current meta. Okay, so I mean, more or less, um, from from what I'm gathering too, is that uh, the Hogak matchup has actually become more difficult for players um, yeah. post ban. Um, so they they adapted, but blue white um, has <laughs> um, has some room to grow. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I have recommended a couple things. Uh, players have been testing it out, and I will we'll delve a bit into that, um, you know, later in the episode. But yeah. um, I think that um, most matchups have remained more or less the same uh, for blue white. Um, most are on Doom Switch's uh, variation of, of the deck uh, with slight adjustments, personal preferences, and whatnot. Um, but it's whole game. It's still yeah. that's that's the that's the nemesis, um, but we will address it. And um, I do have some positive news from a player who uh, did well today. Yeah. Um, top Act, sixteen. Like actually today too. <laughs> like yeah, really before, before thirty. The yeah, thirty minutes before we went on, he uh, he posted his top sixteen. So. Yeah, and um, you know, it, to to my surprise, he actually went in with the suggestions that I made and um, did well. Beat Hogak. So that's that. That's important. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, and with with that, do you think that I, I'm I'm pretty sure I know your answer on this one, <laughs> but with notable uh, players, control players such as Gabe Nassif and Shota Yasaoka for MC4 switching off of control, you know they play different variants of it, but the fact that mm-hmm. they're switching off of it, uh, Gabe played. Eldrazi Tron and Shota played Is It Phoenix. Do you think it's time to just maybe hang it up for a second? Or how do we adapt it, from here? Yeah, I mean, I personally won't. <laughs> yeah. You I know, know that. that. I knew that was. <laughs> what do you think for um, like your average. But your average. Your player, av- like maybe I, the I, listener, I, you know. Objectively, yeah. objectively yes. Yes. There, there, are, there are definitely um, well positioned decks right now yeah. that. Um, have proven even in you know in mtgo premieres and challenges and whatnot have showed up especially e-tron i mean that's yeah, that's, that's been on fire um yeah. so i don't blame anyone for switching off blue white to play something uh, a bit more explosive um with a higher win rate um yeah. you know th- these decks may have you know few bad matchups here and there but for the most part come out so hot are doing a bit more unfair things than blue white um require less effort um yeah. you know, and in yields results so i i definitely see uh the appeal for moving away um of that said there's also some some ways that blue white can go um that aren't really popular with some of these players uh some of the suggestions i made for example 
um, there's there's some resistance uh, simply yeah. because it's not the, tr the tried and true or pure form to play control. But Hogak requires you to adapt. Yeah. And, and so I think that um, if you want to continue playing blue white, um, there's a few concessions you have to make um, that historically the suggestions I'm going to make uh, have worked and yeah. players are playing and right away a uh, player posted a bunch of pictures from his experience on MTGO and immediately had a uh, positive win rate against Mono Red Phoenix and, and Hogak. Um, and then today, of course, we had the player do well against Hogak uh, and Mono Red Phoenix <laughs> with yeah. these, you know, so yeah, definitely they work, but you have to be able to, um, it's, to, to, to accept that this is the way to go. Yeah, it's like one of those things. It's it's hard, it's, I know, even for me, to to want to change from what I'm good at, but also what I'm familiar with, right? right. Like, and, and change is hard, dude. <laughs> it, 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 it is it is hard. It is hard, and um, I I don't want to I don't want to use this terminology, but I feel like, and I'm not speaking for everybody, but <laughs> there was a post, a tweet that I had recently where I I say I'm, I'm baffled by players you know complaining about the same old you know matchup issues yeah. um that that particular creatures have addressed in the past but still refuse to play them because it's just not not their style yeah um, so then players like nasif and whatnot move away but nasif actually has played some of these creatures before but again there's good reason to play other uh competitive decks right now um you know that, that have put up results so uh that said you know, if you guys have any questions regarding some of the suggestions that I'm going to make tonight, there's always the primer. I'm still updating it. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the the ex explanations are there, um, and so if you have any questions, you, you're always free to ask, and you know, which, do my best. Thing. Which again, that all that info will be in the show notes or what it, wherever you're consuming this content, which, it will be which, yes, in the comments which, section. So, Which, by the way, also now includes um, the Wall of Omens primer <laughs> yeah. uh, that together, and also uh, Doom Switch's update, updated cyborg guide. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I was just curious, because I know a lot of people, for whatever reason, it seems like control players are kind of gravitating towards Eldrazi Tron, myself included, because, like, I don't... I don't uh, you know, I, I don't like to switch up the deck, I'll admit... I, yeah. I, I like I like playing my factor fictions and uh, playing as few as few surgicals main deck as possible. So I have I have put together in paper actually um, mm -hmm. Eldrazi Tron and it's it's a good it's a fun deck but it's a fun deck know. and it and it and it, and it's uh, good. Operates, it operates from multiple angles and that's that's what makes it difficult. Yeah, uh, for players to you know like Tron you know what to expect but each Tron's kind of like damn what's going to happen next you yeah. know so yeah so yeah it's like multi-layer threats <laughs> oh yeah definitely and and of course chalice on one just hoses a lot of decks including blue white so yeah it, yeah it hurts yeah. us quite a bit the, one of the one of the things that we're going to look into today was um you know adam cohen's uh list and how he opted out of playing like oust as a fifth path and yeah. went with because of chalice yeah so i thought i thought that was smart and also hogak oh so. yeah um, so we're going to field some, uh, questions that we got from Twitter users and people that were in the Facebook group and just, I mean, all over the place, really. We got, we got, yeah. uh, quite a few of them here. So let's dig into them. This comes from Facebook user, John Gallagher, and he writes, is Terminus worth being played to better the percentage against Hogak? Or should we accept Hogak as a bad matchup and focus on other matchups with the more traditional builds as of late? So, I think Terminus is in a better position yeah. than it was. I think that if you approach the matchup like you would approach Dredge, it's okay. Yeah. Um, the thing is that they still have a sack outlet. Yeah. And so they can play around the Terminus if they want. Mm -hmm. um, they also play pretty resiliently. In fact, this new version of Hogak is sort of similar to Dredge, um, but they're 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 more explosive. Oh yeah. They're, they're, more, they're more they're more resilient. Um, so, and even Dredge wasn't really hosed by Terminus. In fact, 
dredge players will tell you that settle the wreckage was a bigger problem to them than terminus. I still right? ma- I still mainboard settles. <laughs> yeah, That's... so 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 settle settle is is good against this particular strategy. I'd say more so than, than terminus. terminus. But 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 that said, I like terminus more against a deck like if you're playing against um, even like Etron, for example, right? Where you have thought nuts here. Yeah, and they can look at your hand, they can rip your verdict, whatever. But if you're playing with Terminus top of your deck, that's that's a nice position to be. Yeah, that's good. You know what I mean? So I I do like Terminus, and also I mean, the popular deck plays Verdict right now. Yeah, and so a humans player is most likely going to name Verdict right now. Absolutely. You know, so Terminus, you get the edge in that in that matchup too. Um, yeah, that, so yeah, that's a definitely a good point. Just being able to kind of juke, because humans is still a very popular. Deck. Oh yeah, still. So oh, yeah. if you're able to juke them and maybe, you know, hit they they name verdict and then you next turn you miracle terminus, just get to go. Gotcha. Right, right, and also and also I, I mean, sweepers aren't the best thing to, to play against Jund, right? Yeah. But but you but to to take out all sweepers against Jund is yeah, incorrect. No. I like even one or two Ooh. against. And so I always like if, to hedge. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And and so they are good at ripping your hand apart. But again, if you're playing from the top of your deck, it's Can't nice to have yeah. the terminus. And actually, from Miracles players that I've talked to, they had a very good um, uh, record against John. But, but now John has evolved also. Oh um, yeah. Since, you know, so I mean, it's been it's been more resilient too. Um, but yeah, I think terminus is fine right now. Um, but you have to make some uh, deck building concessions as well. Like I know that Utah played Narset in the main of of Miracles. I don't I, think I, I still, don't like that. I still don't think it's the best thing. But you know what? I even saw Curry Vore five zero with uh, main deck uh, Narsets with ten creatures. So uh, Narset is that good that She's the ability. Damn good. <laughs> you know what it is. You know what it is. It's because she's she's such a strong card against. Uh, is it Phoenix? Yeah. That in, in just anything, any card that is um, drawing, you know, volume of cards, that she's still going to be good regardless, even if you can't really dig optimally. Yeah. Um, so, and I think, honestly, if you look at it from a Search for Esconza perspective, um, I think that eight to ten creatures would would justify playing max one search for Asganta. It's yeah. been done before. You can play eight to ten with one as uh, Asganta. But Narsa is so good that it has the extra ability yeah. to you can play a second copy and, oh. and get away with it. So I think that um in in this version uh that y- Yuta play that played Narsa with Mir- with Terminus, um I think it's just him, you know, wanting to head the hedge against the the mirrors. You know what I mean? Opposing Jaces. Um yeah. and is because honestly, miracles is terrible against miracles, especially is terrible against the mirror. They don't really play the same. You know what I mean? Like Jace yeah. is you against you know an opposing Narset. So you want some. You want a hedge against that matchup too. Um, so just bear in mind that if you're playing Terminus, you you need to make Terminus the focus of what you're doing. Um, but you you can also tweak it like Utah did to still respect control because con- control players they're going to show up with colonnades. Yeah. I mean, it's just, that's, that's no matter what. It's like my like myself. No Good old what, Gil Gates. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I I think Terminus is in a fine position, but there's going to be certain things you you'll, you'll miss out on um, from the traditional control build. Um, you have to play in less numbers here. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, it's just always awkward with to me to play a Narset, activate. And then, oh crap! I drew a terminus. If this was yeah. actually a verdict or a wrath or even a settle, I'd have some play here. But now I have to wait two more turns to to fire it off. And if you don't have Jason now, play, well, you can't. But I will it. say this though. I will say this though. I I like mentor more with terminus because if you if you uh, terminus the board, you you actually can dig with Jace and whatnot in your cantrips for your mentor, pretty pretty reasonably. And you're able to put it back in the field faster than your opponent can probably recover. Yeah. So and if you have I a do, fetch, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So I do like mentor players playing mentor. I do like terminus more with mentors. So if you have to play a sweeper, you don't lose your your mentor. Um, but I, 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 to your original question, to fight off Bogak, no, I don't think it's the best way to do it. Yeah. 
All right. All right. Um, so moving on, we have Facebook user Joel Roski the second. Hope I didn't butcher that last name too bad. Um, he asks, "What are some thoughts on Esper versus Jeskai in the current meta?" So, not quite blue white, but we did right. s we did see at the MC Guillaume Wafatapa place ninth with Esper. But his question specifically is Esper versus Jeskai. What are your thoughts on that? So first, let's go as such on Wafa. Yeah. It's, he's a master. He is at, the at man. He's the a master. Legend. I mean, he's, no one can pilot that deck the way that he does. Oh. No one can get away with jamming four Esper charms. <laughs> and, and, you yeah. know, in, in, in this climate, 2019, and still and do as well as he did. So to even ha be in ninth place is impressive. Yeah. Um, that said, there was a, a list, I think it 5 owed like, pretty much his exact copy yeah so there's some, there's some merit there to his list i mean it, it is it could could have been a bunch of easy match it could have been a bunch of juns and you know whatever where esper is actually in a pretty good position against but um compared to jess guy um i'm actually going to say that jess guy um the, the the one thing that i like jess guy for is the human matchup um it, oh my god so many so many removal yeah, spells so many removals right but the thing is, and this is a conversation I was having with uh, with one player that's um, actually he's his name is uh, Gallon Falafarska. He's uh, he's actually the, the first player who ever top eight with Mardu Pyro, um, hmm. and so he was talking to me about like Jeskai Esper, like what direction to go if we were to splash third color, and it it was a good conversation because although Esper. Uh, is is a more, is a more pure control deck. Yeah. Um, Jess guy has the the, the multifaceted approach of actually being able to kill your opponent. Yeah. Bolt and snap so bolt. That, that's that's important right now. Yeah. Um, but at the same rate, black gives you bigger removal spells. Yeah. That that are relevant against the bigger creatures in a deck like Hogak, in a deck like Etron, where Helix and Bolt are not going to get. Yeah. Able to Okay, so although Helix and Bolt are nice additional removals to Path to Exile, they suffer the same issues as Blue White, where you need to you need to play like an Owl to get rid of bigger creatures. Yeah. Okay. So that's my only concern, and historically, that's always been the issue with Jess Guy is dealing with the bigger threats. Right. Um, you know what I mean? So that's that's where I'm at with Jess Guy. As far as Esper, they also have Kaya's Guile. Yeah. Right? Big great card. That great actually, addition. Great addition. In, the graveyard which i think is great um and you also have uh kaya herself that can be played the one of hedge alongside nihil spell bombs and you have a win condition that also interacts yeah. the grid so i i like esper's positioning out of the main against the graveyard based decks um and against control mirrors it's actually really good because of esper charm and whatnot yeah um so yeah i well, unless, of course, you, you're up against Teferi, where you can't play anything at instant speed, and you can't draw cards with an set. <laughs> I mean, Teferi, he just is kind of a, a cheat code in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but I think but I think that if if you if you're if your meta is humans, smaller creatures, go go not as many graveyard based decks. Go right. Just go. Yeah. But if you're if you're trying to play a deck right now in this climate with Hogak leading the way yeah and also e-tron and whatnot i'd say where where actual card advantage does matter when they're ripping your part your hand you actually want cards right right um I, I say esper does that very very well right on so in a say 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 this player or anyone listening is playing a gp or you know a 5k or 10k tomorrow which would be your suggestion in an open My meta Right now, right now, because of Is It Phoenix, because of Etron, and because of Hogak, I would go. Personally, I would go with Blue White, but it, but but between those two, I would go with Esper. Right on, right on. Yeah, it just it, it seems like it has a lot more game against the graveyard decks. They so. they pretty much have between Kaya's Guile, the card advantage, and Esper Charm. Um, and remember, you can also Esper Charm um, an Aria, which yeah. is so there's so, yeah so thanks I'm for the 10 life <laughs> yeah so, so there's there's definitely there's definitely merit to playing esper right now awesome awesome so our next question comes from twitter user at voodoo kick and he asks um is this not the best 
Blue Eye Control Engine to beat Hogak. And he has an example of um, Path uh, acting like Path gains 15 life a turn with most, multiple ghostly prison isn't a thing. And he gave the uh, card of Martyr of Sands. So I will say this. <laughs> I, I didn't promise I was going to answer all the questions. <laughs> this, this one this one came across a bit confusing to me. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure if he was suggesting to play... Martyr like, of Sands? Stuff, like Martyr of Sands, this variation of the deck. Right. Um, or that simply that blue-white has all the tools it needs. Yeah. Um, but, we're, I, you know, you, you, can go, you can go many ways with blue-white, right, whatever. Right. Like you can play freaking uh, Amiria Skyru in blue white if you wanted to, you know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> but we're, we're actually that that deck does gain a bunch of life and yeah. and, and, and Dirtles forever. Um, but I, I don't understand the question as well. Um, and I ghostly think... and, and ghostly prison, ghostly prison doesn't stop them from attacking your planeswalkers. So I yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. Um, I think basically. I would personally rather play timely reinforcements than oh, any yeah, kind of martyr shenanigans, basically. Yeah, timely is yeah, no, excellent. Sure. <laughs> timely is you know, like there was a time when there there was some there was a good reason to play Blessed Alliance, and and like yeah. if you're playing, for example, like there was a time when um, uh, Benny Hill, uh, Benny Hill's on MTGO yeah. was playing. Spreading Seas version, and I think Alex can never pronounce his last name. He went he went ninth at the Pro, Pro Tour. Exilon, uh, Exilon. Is it start with an M? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he yeah. he uh, played Ojuta in the main, and like that's that's a decent like multi-purpose way to play Blessed Alliance, where you can untap, you know, your Ojuta. You can also use it as life gain. You can use it to sack. An infect creature like there's multiple uses for Blessed Alliance, but I just there's just so much shit yeah. that hits the field today that like that per, that mode doesn't do anything. Yeah, uh, the the four life isn't actually as good as having the bodies from Timely against Burn and yeah. against you know what I mean, or even against uh, Mono Red Phoenix, um, and even against Hogak. So I just don't see any other besides maybe Kitchen Finks if you're playing a mid range version sure. with. with Restoration Angel, but even then, I saw Curry Vore playing Timely alongside Resto because you have Narset, you have Snapcaster Mage that can bring it back, and you were in a climate right now where the bodies matter. Oh yeah, having having the three one ones are great, and alongside even like Wall of Omens, now you now have four bodies that can that can block, and you know, I mean, so um, I think there's no other spell that does what Timely does um, in the matchups that you need it. Um, so I don't. I don't think you need, like you said, you need the prison. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think timely for three mana um, gets the job done. And it's so efficient. Yeah. Especially if you're getting both sides, right? Like. Yeah. Um, so moving on to switching gears up to a different, less talked about deck that is still putting up some good results. Uh, Twitter user at crypto sc asks, uh, with Jund being one of the big winners at MC4 over the weekend. And it, just, and it just won again, by the way. What's that? At the car, it just won again today. Oh, yeah, today, yeah. The card, the card market series, I think it was. Yeah. Um, they won against um, Blue White. He, he continues to ask, uh, Blue White having an outright horrendous win rate at the MC itself, what can be done to patch up that hole? So... I mean, I guess we'll, I guess we'll dub into ways to adapt now. Um, yeah, definitely. I think... I think more or less you can you can actually keep the list um, similar if you're playing Doom Switches list, which I still highly recommend. Yeah. Player just told me tonight said he went five one one with Doom Switches list and said he's a very smart man. Which he, <laughs> he really, I mean the 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 guy is leading trophies on MTGO. Yeah, and put something out, you listen to him. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, listen, in fact, I mean I'm gonna be humble here. You you listen to him before you listen. To him. <laughs> The guy, the guy, the guy was the first to help help another player, the the Austin player, win the GP with blue white. So, whatever yeah, he puts Bursa, out, Bursevich, who won the Austin Bursevich, who won the GP, yeah, right. right. So Austin, I mean, um, his name is his name is I think is pronounced how 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 yeah, and he, and he's, 
I was going to say he's in he's in the group that he's in the community. The, yeah, yeah, so. and um, and so this is what he says straight from the horse's mouth. This is what he said in his primer, uh, his cyber guy. Sure. He said that right now, with Hogak being in the position that it's in, and from what we've seen from the the percentages, they've gone down from I think it was above fifty percent for a free ban Hogak yeah. for blue white in blue white's favor to now being below 45 percent. that's wild that's right, so right. wild so, <laughs> and it's simply because it's become more creature centric it it's more like a dredge deck with more resiliency yep so he suggests that you want more toughness creatures with toughness three plus yeah to handle to handle the slew of creatures that are in hogak it, it's easy to get sucked into you know hogak is the problem right, right? And Benchvine is the problem, but they make up eight creatures out of the thirty plus. Sure, that's, okay? that's a good so, point when you put it like that. <laughs> right. So, so when when you look at when you look at the real issue in that matchup, it's it's all the body. It's Hogakin family. Yeah, that's what the problem is. So what they do is they 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 do dwindle down your life with these little one ones and two twos issues that Blue White typically has, even against Burn. And I mentioned this in one of my posts that, you know, decks like Burn and Mono Red Phoenix, they're, they they take you down more so with their creatures than they do with their burn spells. Oh, yeah. Okay, They put your life below a comfort zone really fast because you can't de- – if you don't have your path or your oust, it feels really bad to verdict to their one or two creatures. So, yeah. so, so small creatures are the bane of Blue White's existence. Because mm-hmm. like, it feels bad it, to waste a removal spell on a 2-2, basically. Right, right. <laughs> and it's the same. And it's the same story when you're playing against the mirror, and you're staring down a snapcaster mage, yep. and you feel like, like, is this really my it, competitive deck? It, I can't deal with the snapcaster mage. Yep. Well, well, and this, then you, and then you look up, and you've taken like eight life from him, and it's just like, yeah. well, now I'm like super far behind. <laughs> right, right, right. And and while in in the person who first first played the first snapcaster mage is typically ahead because yeah. now you're you're sculpting your hand, they're responding to what you're doing while you're just sitting back. Letting that snapcaster do it. Hit you. Hit you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Just the tap sideways. Yep. Um, so, so my my thing is, and I and I immediately saw this coming from blue white mid range. It's been a deck I've been playing since days of standard. Um, and to recap, I I first played uh, Callblade, and I liked the ability to you know switch to a proactive plan and beat down if I needed to, um, and then, you know. Um, Went then and went with Stoneforge Mystic. Like I love that strategy, being yeah. able to adapt and not play one gear the entire time, just sitting back and answering everything. Um, as I mentioned one time in the primary, sometimes the best way to control is to, you know, force your opponent to yeah. respond to what you're doing. Yeah, be proactive. Which, which right, which throws them off their game, right? Definitely. So now, 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 not only are they having to deal with the fact that like you may have a planeswalker, but now they're they're trying to attack you on a different. Um, different layer yeah. so so what i suggested was to start implementing more bodies into blue white um and this is what doom switch has suggested in his guide he says that you need to play more three plus toughness creatures like restoration angel like uh characters like Hall, lyra um and even said that while omens in the past has been a little bit unimpressive to him he sees why the card is valuable against these specific situations right. where a blood gas is taking down your life, yep. you know, uh, or a stitcher supplier is Jesus. taking. Yeah, uh, you're just like, is, is this for real? And then guess what? Then the eight damage from Hogak is going to take you out. Oh yeah. So it's not, it wasn't Hogak the entire time. M- maybe an early Hogak can be a problem, but when Hogak lands, is because you're already down below, you know. Yeah. This. So I I think that death and, by a thousand cuts basically. Right, right. So I think that implementing more bodies, like Adam Cohen's list that we're going to link after after the show. Yeah. Um, he 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 finished top sixteen, and he credited omens um, against Hogak. You know what I mean? Like you're you're preserving your life total, right? And John Farrell, another player in my community, immediately said he noticed a difference against Hogak when he beat Hogak with eighteen life. 18 life. It's wild. He goes, it, 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 yeah. So it bought those two omens, blocked two of his creatures, and he was able to more, um, more strategically use his paths on stuff he really wanted to use. Right. So he wasn't 
which actually is fantastic when you have rest in peace because you're not worried about losing your 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 path and then not being able to snap path it again, right? right. Which is a key a key area of beating Hogak is to drop the rest in peace. But if you already used your path early and now you're down to three paths, you can't snap path. You're you're pretty much screwed. Yeah. But have omens taking care of the small shit and then Hogak lands or Vengevine lands, then you can path you know, the real problem. Right. While while Omen just sits there like a it hero. Does what it does, man. It's it what does it does. It just sits there and smiles. <laughs> right. And and so there are twenty Four plus creatures in Hogak that Omens blocks. That's insane. That yeah, that's Let insane. That like okay, and if you play Restoration Angel, and they go and try to either remove the Omens or they they build their feeder big enough to fight through, you know your Omens, you can Restoration Angel on combat yeah. and and then reset the Omens and they didn't do anything. Now you have a Resto and an Omens with two bodies in the field. That have four plus that have four toughness, and then you can right? start turning the corner from there too. And then you can start turning the corner because none of their creatures have flying. Yeah. So you can now attack with resto. You can actually use cryptic command strategically to tap down their their bodies yep. and and keep swinging in. You can snap cryptic command and do it again, and all of a sudden now you 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 put you put the, the backswing on them. Oh yeah. Right. So the creatures do matter and of course you have resto lyra where resto it now becomes a four five with lifelink which is definitely relevant if you're a lyra with resto right oh yeah right now if i was to make any suggestions for you for you if you want to implement omens i'd say two is sufficient okay we do have draw power you don't need them everywhere but in those particular matchups like mono red phoenix you know burn um even jund very very good because yeah. you're stopping early attacks, you're you're stemming the bleeding, and, uh, you're, you're, and then and Resto is so good against Planeswalkers, just so oh, good yeah. against Planeswalkers. I mean, he, yeah, just just right out, uh, like John John was blowing blowing up my phone with pictures, like, dude, this is amazing. I'm, I'm about to kill Red. I'm about to kill Red. Like, it, it's that good because they don't see it coming. Yeah, you can hold you can hold up mana, right? Which is another important thing with resto by turn four you can either jace you can cryptic command you can i guess like an adam cones this you can factor fiction you can restoration angel lots of action yeah by turn four uh, and resto allows you to kind of you know uh determine what you what is best to do in, in that situation and if they have a planeswalker you can end the turn you know uh do that but also another key thing with omens that players forget is that it is also a cantrip Yep. If not the best cantrip, it's a two mana, but it's a cantrip with a body. Yep. Right. And draw you another card with it. Mm -hmm. And for that, if you are in a situation which happens a lot, and you, you cannot deny this, this is one of the things that blue white players have experienced since the beginning of time. I need the fourth land for wrath. I yep. need the fourth land for wrath. And you don't get it, right? Yep. You, you can actually, if you haven't played omens before or have limited experience with omens, you can play omens. And then at the block, as normal, Yep. and at the end of your opponent's turn, don't path their creatures, path your omens. Yep. And then you lose your omens, you gain... Well, you're going to wrath, so... Yeah, 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 you get a wrath, right? <laughs> and they have their three creatures, which, by the way, omens also forces over extension against the deck like Hogak, because they're trying to get your life down. They're going to drop more creatures onto the field. Right. Okay? And so it forces over extension, it draws a card, it soaks up damage... It, it, it actually segues nicely into your turn three planeswalkers because you can play omens and then play your 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 narsa he, john said he was able to have multiple activations from narsa because omens was there yeah so that's that's fantastic um and on top of that it helps you ramp it where it's irrelevant like sometimes against blue white if they're not playing the snapcast mage against you you can pass it get ahead on mana if you're falling behind or you can actually ramp to turn five if yeah. you want Play your Lyra or your Hulk or whatever. So yeah, Teferi. or Teferi. Yeah, Omens has a lot of applications that are in my primer, and it's definitely been helping players playing it right now. Um, and I think right now the best way to go about it is to cut one or two of the flex cards and Doom Switches list. Yeah. Don't switch too much in there. Maybe drop the three Snapcaster Mages, which is completely reasonable as well. Go three Snapcaster Mages, two uh, Omens, and if you are inclined to still play Click, play one Click. And that's six creatures. That's yeah. six bodies and that you can play. Okay, yep. and each serve a different purpose against different matchups. And then in the sideboard, I would I would start with two Restoration Angels and a Lyra, 
And then your flex one would probably be the Cataclysm Gear Hulk, but Hulk is good against Urza. It is good against humans. It's so good against Urza. Holy shit. Right. It's and very it's good ve- against humans. It's always been good against and, humans. And it's very good also against, believe it or not, against Hogak. Oh, yeah. Because if, if you have a rest in peace on the field, again, turning the corner is an important element of the strategy. You can you can wipe the board, have a 4-5, they all go in exile, yep. and you have, they have to deal with the, the Cataclysm Gear Hulk. And if they rebuild their board in any way, you can Restoration Angel the Hulk to wipe oh, it Oh, yeah. Again. And so I do want to point out um, Adam's list here. I, I want to point out some of the notables because we've been talking about it and we're talking about uh, Wall of Omens and, and uh, Restoration Angels. I want to sh- just point out specifically what numbers of some mm-hmm. of the cards he was playing. So the, cr- sure. the creatures in the deck, he was playing seven creatures, three Snapcaster Mages, two Wall of Omens, and two Vendillion Clicks main. Um, and then in the sideboard, he did have the two Resto Angels, perfectly, perfectly normal are perfectly reasonable, right? Right. And then for Planeswalkers, he played seven Planeswalkers, three Narsets, so still on the three Narset plan, um, one Time Raveler, two Jace, and then one Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. What do you think, and this is actually just seeing this, reminded me, what do you think of players cutting down to only playing one uh, big T, big Teferi? You think that's kind of the norm now, or? So I I think, I'm not sure if we covered this in the last one but um i think they were still playing uh, two i think they were still playing two when we recorded episode seven which you should go listen to right after this one (laughs) yeah Yeah. um so so like i think i think the thing is that um the 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 deck now has an r set and so it's a five drop yeah and a lot of these are playing 24 lands so you want to you want to be conscious of that too um and so playing one uh, Teferi with 24 lands and multiple Narset to dig for your 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 Teferi, um, I think is is reasonable. It's not you know it's not bad. Yeah. Um, but if you want to play a second, definitely one of the better cards to plus, you know, to a second copy. In fact, I'd argue right now that Cryptic can be shaved down to two. Yeah. And and you and if you want to play another four plus drop, it would be Teferi in my right. opinion. Yeah. And Narset having Narset just lets us find our one of so much more reliably. Yeah, and, pl- yeah. And, and, and someone had a great question. I think it was Daniel Sun, um, actually one of my students who uh, who asked this question, said, you know, how do you figure out numbers? Like, how do you determine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, ep- yeah, in episode seven, right. he definitely oh. did. Yeah, so, I mean, it really comes down to um, understanding the roles of the cards, the yep. redundant, how much redundancy the spells have, right? Like, not seeing... To, uh, a mana leak and a logic not as individual entities, but actually seeing them as one, right? Because yeah. they both are, pur- are their purpose is to hit creatures, but, be, but also be versatile and hit other things. So when you start looking at your list like that and also seeing that you have three NAR sets, more or less like having search for his Gantas, you can build your list with more one of those because you're more likely yeah. to find why you have the one timely, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, she just gives the deck so much more flexibility. Like, you can kind of, you can kind of stave and, and, and hedge against so many different matchups because of Narset. Right, um, and that's why I think players. Um, I, I don't see Narset going below two copies. Honestly, yeah. because of the value that it provides. I'm still playing three, so I, I love oh, yeah. the card. The card's great. Yeah, no, three, three is um, a good number. Um, so and I and I, I like, I like what he did here by shaving it to fairy before the third copy of Narset. Sure. Because he's also playing two clicks, which are relevant in the mirror. Oh, yeah. And it's it's two three drops right there. Yep. So, you know, you don't want to overload on three drops as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so that brings us to the next question. Um, do you think there's going to be another ban? Do you think Hogak's going to... And if so, what card? I assume if you think there will be... I assume it's gonna. You're probably gonna say it's gonna be Hogak, but what do you yeah. think? What do you think? Um, I th- I think that there will be a statement in the near future. <laughs> the ghost, um, not so much stating that they made a mistake, um, but that the deck was so good that they needed multiple things out of it. <laughs> they're 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 gonna def- they're gonna defend. Oh yeah, they're, those, yeah. they're not gonna go back on that, but they're going to state that the deck was that good that it needed multiple bands yeah um, and they probably oh, should they oh probably my should. god could you imagine if they 
ban Hogak and unban Bridge. Oh no! That, 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 that's bad luck. I don't know. I don't know if they'll do that, but I think that they should have gone for the heavy. Like like you said, I think I think it was no no. Actually, none of us last time predicted Hogak. I think you predicted Bridge. I predicted Alter. Yeah, it was and yeah Bridge and Alter in the deck. I, but but by the end of the episode though, you did agree with me. I can I kind of convinced you that yeah. it was going to be Bridge. Um, yeah, but <laughs> oh, but Hogak's the one laughing right now. Yeah, no, big time. Um, and then Affinity for Blue, which is Joey Pasco. He's got a very awesome love, podcast. Love guy. Thanks yeah. for the question. Um, he asks, uh, podcast is called, um, Yo MTG Taps. You should check it out after this one. Um, Yo MTG Taps, uh, but he asks, assuming Hogak is the banned card on 826, how do you think the metagame reacts to the power vacuum, top decks, and, uh, how Azorius specifically adapts? That's a, that's a big question. It's a big, to, it's a big to, question. Because uh, yeah. things, things are always changing in, in yeah. modern, things are fluctuating a lot. Um, in my opinion, um, the decks that are doing really, really well right now, even in Hogak's presence, yeah. are, are not doing well just because they're good against Hogak. They're doing well because they have a good game against the field. Yeah, and I think that a deck like you know Urza, um, you know a deck like um, you know Ur- Urza's Urza's taking a hit. It, it could be better because players are packing so much behavior yeah and a lot, of the, a lot of the strategy is based on you know the sword and the, sort of the meek and whatever um so i think that that gets better because oh, yeah. players will cut on graveyard hate well we won't be playing uh, four you won't see four ley line of sanctities in it or ley line of the right. voids rather in right. every sideboard um I, I i do i do think players go back to dredge and players will start to will, will sleep on dredge when players think that they can just cut graveyard hate and you know let this be a lesson do not cut graveyard hate yeah. too much not too because much. So, many, so many decks operate from that axis uh, or axes so um definitely respect graveyard decks um so dredge does get a little better uh, than it is now hogax pretty much the deck to play for the graveyard yeah um, and i think that jund even though jund has a decent matchup because they do play some graveyard interaction right out of the main and in the cyber or whatever i think that that deck as good as it is now gets even scarier gets yeah. even better um so that those are those are my opinion the decks that are good right now get better the decks that are being um affected by graveyard hate uh those decks actually get a boost too yeah what do you think blue i mean and, it's hard it's and, hard to predict what blue white's going to do because that really does depend on what the rest of the metagame does so right so i mean i think that um you obviously you will will have no reason with Hogak gone. I don't think anyone has a reason to play Surgical Extraction in the main yeah. at that point. Um, so you I, can, I hate playing that card main. I really I know it's good, but sometimes it's just atrocious. Right, <laughs> and actually another another point too is like I think also like a deck like Amulet. Um, you know those kind of decks also get better. Um, but as far as as far as like blue white, I think that you you know you'll see it move away from surgical as in the main. Um, you know, I think that if if Jund and whatnot are still big decks and Etron, you still want bodies. So I, yeah. I, I like the body plan is something that blue white should be doing more of yeah. instead of instead of just blue white kind of plays from hand. They they claim see the thing is interesting about blue white players, and they claim Uh-oh. that you know, they claim their mana base. You know helps them with their life total whatever but they sit there and they start at 14 15 you know 13 because they're taking a beating yeah you know early with yeah. no defense with no removal so it's sort truth of like, bombs truth yeah. bombs here from neo <laughs> I, I, trust me I, I love my community i love blue white players and i love blue white but there's some things i notice trends that you know it's like okay well there is a solution yeah. you, you don't you don't want it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's funny um yeah, I mean, do you have any other any other words of wisdom in the current meta, or if we do see this imminent ban happening moving forward? Because that was actually the the last the last question that I had. Uh, oh, well, interesting. Roll, so, if you earlier, have any other, but when I when I uh, spoke to Gallon, uh, Gallon, um, the one who's who, with the Martyr uh, Power Player, um, he's trying out the the mid range, you know, blue white version, whatever. 
um, of the deck, but with a splash of red, just for Helix and a couple bolts, whatever, and some cyber cards. Um, and he took it a step further by playing Omens, Resto, and Splicer. Oh, in the wow. Blade Splicer. Okay, yeah. And he showed me what he was doing, and he was playing against Hogak. He's, he's, I think he's at 60-plus percent right now against Hogak. And basically, he's just bodies upon bodies upon bodies. He's just, you know, Restoration Angel with the Blade Splicer. He's getting golems on the but field. Yeah, their first, the um, first striking 3-3 three, three golems are pretty good yeah, against their 2 first strike, and stuff. Yeah, ex- exactly. And uh, he triple-blocked a Hogak with three golems. <laughs> so, I mean, the bodies do matter. The bodies yeah. do matter. Um, and he said he, he said it definitely makes a difference. Um, you know, obviously, you lose some points against decks where you don't want to tap out. Um, but this is why I love Restoration Angel, why I love the efficiency of, of a card like Wall of Omens. It doesn't cost three plus. You know, someone asked me a good question today, actually. said, you know, why not Monastery Mentor in the main over Wall of Omens? Isn't it always better? And I said, well, three mana versus two is, is a difference. Oh, yeah, big time. The, 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 two, the two body is not going to block effectively upon resolution. You're going to have to wait a whole turn pretty much until you can you know create bodies and whatever yeah um so and on top of that, it, that makes it's sense. yeah it's one of those cards too that there is literally zero value when you first resolve it as opposed to omens replacing itself yeah so i i think that omens has a different role than the mentor i'm not saying it's wrong to play mentor main but I, it's not in the same slot role as well omens right and it almost seems like in that esper mentor deck is really a different beast than even a Esper control deck or especially a blue white uh, right. control deck. Yeah. Yeah, no, Mentor's a good, Mentor's, Mentor's a good card. And, it's great. And, yeah. I, I think another player asked me actually recently this is, these are not podcast questions, questions that I've been getting. Yeah, feel free. Um, <laughs> yeah, another question was, you know, how, how do, well, we actually, there is one question we forgot to, to tackle. And there's a second question I'm going to bring up now. One was, you know, how can we implement a mid range plan? into blue white okay and you effectively so if, if you guys want to implement a mid-range plan in blue white my recommendation like it says my primer is to not go beyond six creatures in the sideboard there's precious sideboard slots yeah. but but if you look at some of the lists that i posted in the deck list from like june on there are a few lists that played six creatures in a challenge and out of the sideboard and tweak their numbers between the main signs about balance and tuning um and and actually are able to bring in more creatures, more bodies, and, and play a more mid-range game um, where now your opponent has to respect your walkers plus these bodies. Yeah. The field. Um, so I think it can be done, but do not go more than six creatures. And right now, I would start with the Rest Hulk Lyra package. Resto. And then if you want to, yeah, Rest Hulk Lyra. And if you wanted to play additional creatures, you can play like the additional click in the sideboard, or you can play Monastery Mentor. Uh, or even guys the same craft where these cards are actually better against like the, the oh, yeah. you, want, you want to win faster like Tron, Tron. yeah um, um, but also the control mirror yeah so th- that's where like I would reserve the last two slots one or two slots of creatures to those kind of matchups and use the four slots right now for the creature century matchups uh, resto is one of those cards players ask you know where does it come in honestly resto is so versatile it's like a moto spell yeah it it is a blocker. It's a removal. It's a it's a defender, and it's an attacker. It and its value with your oh, other yeah. creature, it, it can be brought in against pretty much anything and, and be okay. Um, especially where you see planeswalkers, it's really good at like you said, killing planeswalkers. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that. Um, and then lastly, who was the last player before the podcast began? He said, "How t- how do you um, manage? Um, I guess patience." In the yes, game. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so in the I mirror, think, yeah, patience in the mirror. So yeah, that's a great question. It it's, a, it's actually one that I, I was I was thinking about because we I always talk about you know um, not going to time and yeah. you know being being the aggressor in the control matchup, especially blue white where they don't have a lot of removals and you want to play time cast mage. But how do you assess you know um, what, you know the patience part? And I think a lot of a lot of the control, control mirror is really reading your opponent calculating like you know did they hit their land drop right you know how, how many how many cards do they have in their hand right are they playing anything are they you know in, in information is great in, even that's why you see adam collins this he's playing two click mm-hmm. a lot of play click not just because the body yeah they might lose the body to a bolt or whatever but information oh yeah is so invaluable to a control player so uh, alleviating patience 
or actually mitigating patients or um, knowing how to best utilize it is to really get as much information out of the matchup as you can. Um, and so a card like Click is a good way to basically you know, help with your decision making, right? Yeah. Because again, that's why Thoughtseize players pretty much map out their next five, six turns when they know your hand because they know exactly what to remove, they know exactly what to kill. Um, and so by getting that information, I think it's important, whether it's the information in their hand or information on the field um, is key. And also you have to you have to have threat assessment in the control mirror, like knowing that like oh, it, yeah. might be, it might be okay for them to resolve Jace, the Mind Sculptor, and even maybe to fairy, maybe, maybe save your counters for like, it's okay to blow your counters on a Narset or a Teferi, a baby Teferi, because those are actually going to be the real issues in the control Oh, mirror. yeah. Okay. The, the short J answer is... <laughs> the short answer to that question is resolve Teferi Time Raveler, and it makes it so much easier. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, that, I'm no, joking, and, obviously. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, today, a player said that he lost to Blue White for the first time in a long time playing Jeskai, and I just joked. I was like, was it because of baby Teferi? <laughs> and he said, yes, that was one of the reasons. <laughs> so, That'll yeah, do. I... I think threat assessment and information uh, are key to, um, you know, uh, under uh, be best utilizing your patients in that matchup. Um, I, I, w I and actually for another thing too is if you have a situation like you saw, I'm not sure if you, you saw this, but when Waffle was playing the blue white player, the blue white player finished him in 15 minutes. Yeah, like he, he took him out in 15 minutes. Why? Because he, well, he resolved to fairy the baby's fairy. Um, but it also, that's when he knew it was okay to attack with Colonnade. Yeah. Because the fairy was going to protect him from removal in combat. Oh, yeah. Right? So it's all about basically planning your turn ahead, information, you know, threat assessment. Those are all ways that you can manage your patients in that matchup. Um, because grinding the blue-white right now is not where you want to be. Yeah. Like, it's just it's a headache and, and the longer it goes the more the more opportunity you give your opponent to resolve that to vary oh, yeah. just, so so definitely apply pressure um when you can uh and and don't don't hold that snapcaster mage make an ambush viper and, and go to town yep no i i agree be more more aggressive be more proactive and that's kind of what the last episode almost boiled down to um just yeah, don't it, be afraid it, to play things early game basically right and um i when i spoke to gallon about this where he's now implementing a, a deck with that has creatures and planeswalkers he said the reason why mid-range for blue white doesn't really work that well with the exception of maybe like you know curry vor has made it work before right playing the resto package like yeah. 12 and he's done it because he's done it this, he's almost like the waffle of blue white mid-range right yeah um, but also, it hasn't worked that well because just playing creatures, you lose out on the card advantage from the planeswalkers. Yeah. And playing and just playing planeswalkers, you lose the ability to to defend well on the field. Yeah. And play, and play to the board and pressure your opponent's life total. Yep. What I like is Curry Vore's most recent list, for example, if you have a chance, which I think we're gonna have to link to this one because it's very different than other lists and players that are playing it and are finding success with it. Is that it implements a hybrid approach of yeah. the element of mid range playing ten creatures in the main, and then playing ladder in the sideboard, and also playing like six or seven planeswalkers. Nice, and playing the key spells. He's not playing surgical main, so you'll you'll like that. Oh yeah, um, yeah. You'll have to send me that list. You'll yeah, have to send me he's, that playing, link. He's, playing, he's playing more bodies to make up for the fact that he does not have the surgical main. Um, and he's just playing four rest in peace in the sideboard, and he ha and he's been doing well against Hogak too. And if you read Ross Miriam's article on Dredge about how to approach the graveyard based decks like Dredge, you can apply the philosophy to Hogak too. And he mentions in that article that playing blockers, defenders, forcing them to play a game they're not comfortable with. Yeah. Okay. Because they see blue white, they're they're not expecting to be facing down bodies. They they're, they're going to go right for the walker. It's embarrassing. It, it, walkers are horrendous in that matchup. They're horrendous against you know humans. Yeah. And walkers are great, but they're not always the optimal way to play against creature centric matchups. Right. Especially water where they're resilient. You definitely want to body them up. And so he he plays a more hybrid approach of reactive and proactive elements in one. And so it harmonizes both strategies, and you're able to adapt, you know, more effectively against different types of decks. Yeah. And in a lot of modern success is based on proactive decks. So I think absolutely. That, 
Im implementing some proactivity into blue white um, does give you that edge too. Yeah, definitely. No, I uh, I agree. There's actually one more um, Facebook user, uh, and he's been on the podcast. Uh, my buddy Evan Bruce asks, "Do you think it's time to start mainboarding rest in pieces?" This was, this is one I just thought of, but he did ask it. No. Yeah, I, I will no. never sign up. For, I I personally <laughs> cannot do that. No, to me, to me, honestly, that's worse than playing surgical extraction main. Yeah, I don't care what he says. That's worse. That's worse <laughs> than that. Because in my opinion, you are pigeonholing your design a bit too much. Oh, yeah. I know that. Um, um, I think it was uh, Daniel Fournier. Yeah. He, oh, his he, list was wild. You talking about it, the it one that he wild. won? He met. He met a game. And by the way, on a different topic. He mentions like how cryptic command isn't really that great right now. So if if you want to shave a cryptic command to two and you still want to play, which I do recommend, yeah. I think two is fine. But just keep in mind that cryptic commands actually gain more value when you're on a beatdown plan because it can be utilized. Tap your team, attack you. Yeah, exactly. Just to, just to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rest in peace. I mean, not being able to play Snapcaster Mage that is valuable. I, I feel in in a lot of matchups, especially in the mirror when you want to, you know. Um, play as an ambush viper and pressure. I just don't see rest in peace. Um, it's just, it, there's gonna be matches where you just you draw and you're like, okay, cool, humans, wow, you know what I mean. And, and then like, it, it's just playing one or two rest in peace enough. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I mean, it, the way that Hogag's constructed, it could possibly be faster than a turn two rest in peace. Exactly. <laughs> like, which is crazy, exactly. but I have the same argument. Um, and one of the um, the replays that uh daniel son showed me in his um in his session with me he's like you know what what could i have done with this surgical extraction he drew it really late okay okay um and he's staring down four creatures in a whole gag and he's got a whole gag in the side in the, in the graveyard and like some other creatures and i was like this is this is the this is the nature of the matchup i mean it, it they played to the board yeah. so you need to respond to the board before you even worry about the graveyard hate. Right. The graveyard hate is, is, is great and all, and it should be in your deck. But you have to be able to deal with the board. Yep. The, these decks swarm the board quicker than you're able to, like, on a, on a probability scale, draw your hate. Yeah. So you you need to be able to respond to the board. And this is actually why I was a huge fan of a card like Ruined Halo back in the day. Oh, yeah. That if you drew Ruined Halo, you can respond to the board. If you draw Surgeon Extraction, you can't respond to the yeah. board. So Rune Halo even now is actually still fine. If you're playing a more creature approach, you want to play a Rune Halo on the sideboard along with your creature. Let's say you want to go three rest in peace and one Rune Halo. That's fine because even if you draw Rune Halo late and you're staring yeah. down three Holgax, Holgax, the Arisen that's Necropolis. It. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You know, you can name Aria a flame, and they can't yeah. do anything. To you. So Rune Halo is still in a good position, just not good in the main with all the walkers. Yeah. Awesome. That was just one I just thought of. He he did message uh, on my Facebook post that I just posted on my Facebook. So, okay. cool. I, don't get me wrong. If you're in a local meta and yeah, it's like it was seventy percent graveyard decks play in the main. But if you're right. going to open field, I don't feel comfortable playing yeah. rest in peace. And he knows it might even have been of a bit of a troll because he knows my thoughts on rip main. I'm like I will never never do yeah. it. <laughs> um, no, they... so cool. But yeah, um, do you have anything else to add or? Oh, that's that's pretty much it. Awesome. You guys know me. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, thanks everybody for sending your questions to us on on Twitter and in the Facebook group. Um, if you enjoy the content, as always, make sure to like it. And if you really dig it, go on over to Apple Podcasts. Give me a five star review. Say a couple of kind words on there. It really helps with like all the analytics and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I am Les Alex or at uh, Alex Blackard, and this is Francesco Amati, or on Twitter at spikes underscore neo. Um, again, I'm on all the podcast apps, YouTube, and Twitch, so go follow me on there if you dig the content. And as always, Magic players, be kind to one another. Have a great night. Absolutely.